Now this is podcasting. Hey, hey. All right. We're in it. First episode of yeah. Power Trio. Power Trio. <laughs> yeah, this ought to be interesting. <clears throat> Today we're Entertaining. discussing the musical topic of the state of rock. All right, should we just go ahead and inter- introduce ourselves, get a bit of exposition in there? Yep, go for it. All right. Okay, am I starting then? Yeah, All right, I am Wes. I'm, um, I'm Jack. And I'm Charlie, a.k.a. the British one. Yep. <laughs> the most easily distinguishable voice of the three. Yeah. That time, that time zone motherfucker. <laughs> All right. Here. All right, so, State of Rock. All right, Jack, you want to start us off? Take us through your notes. Okay, well, should we start off with, uh, I think it's appropriate, considering it just came out, the new Muse album. Uh, oh, boy. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, just, and then just, like, what what do you think that represents? Apparently, um, I'm, the, apparently I'm the coordinator, but what do you think that I don't know how this happened. This is bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah, Simulation Theory. Uh, what does it represent? Um, yeah, it's just like, I don't know. He's being bad. Dab, dab, dab. <laughs> no, um, I don't know. I'm gonna lose all credibility off the bat, but I liked it. <laughs> that album's just, yeah. like, so stupid. <laughs> it's just ridiculous, I'm, yeah. it. I'm on, like, just the verge over the halfway point of liking it. Sort of on the fence. It's a very yeah. mixed album for me. I don't know. It's it's definitely mixed. It's it's weird. It's um, high highs and deep valley lows. Thought contagion and, and get up and fight. Bad. Those are those are bad. But um, honestly, honestly, get up and fight destroys me. Like that <laughs> song is hilarious. Yeah, I there's I go between pops, like thinking it's pops. the worst thing ever that Muse have ever like done, and then just thinking. Okay, whatever. Okay, it's, it's <laughs> whatever. Not, no, nothing's worse than Psycho, but like. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna lose all credibility for thinking that Dig Down is the best single and one of the best songs on the album. That one grew on me. Like, I did I not like it. Synths, when you've got earphones in and those bassy synths come in, it sounds so good. <laughs> that was the, I don't know. That was the only song I had heard previously. That's like probably the most serious one because, like, that's mm-hmm. I don't know. It's Madness 2.0, and I feel like Muse weren't so deep in the concept yeah. of y- that yet. So yeah, I, I, it's I, not... love, I don't know about you, but I love Madness. I love that song. Yeah, I love Madness. I love the. That's right. Yeah, it's if you're gonna. Nine for me. I think I think back when I, back when I was a little more of a rock elitist, I didn't like that song as much. But I was like, dude, this is a really cool mix. That song. Yeah, it's if you're gonna sell out, that's a pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> that wasn't like no, such they, a. They sold out when they do it in style. Like, yeah, that's they sold out. Like really that, that's the thing that it's... I think is a good talking point about simulation theory is that a lot of people I've seen in comments on like fa- Muse's Facebook posts and stuff are saying like, "Oh, it's all you haters. It's evolution and all this," but there's good evolution. And there's bad evolution. Like, I'm all for evolution. Good evolution for me is, like, the second law and the resistance. For me, they're fantastic I, I think... albums. Not everyone agrees. But then I feel like simulation theory is a prime example of bad evolution. And then, and then drones is devolution. But I think... I think um, drones is trying to get I, back I, to I recently saw, like, anyway. an interview with Matt Bellamy where he was saying... Um, it takes fans five years to sort of like click with our albums mm-hmm. and which is something that uh as sort of um heady and arrogant as that might come off out of context if you know the muse fandom he's right like oh yeah um like people even back like with supermassive black hole people were just on Muse about that, they were like, "Oh, you guys are selling out. This is so that's crap." The, again, that's the that, song on that album that sounds like that. That's true. And then, but now, but now, like now, it's whenever they play it live, people lose their minds. Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what that. That's just every single 
artist ever. People are always going to bitch about new music. Yeah, but, um, and even with, like, The Second Law, which people hated, hated that album when it came out. A lot of Muse fans did. Now, like, I'll Mm -hmm. see people, I I see, like, Reddit posts about people saying The Second Law is their favorite Muse album, which I wouldn't go that far. I I thought that was always, I can see how that could be. Second Second Law is my favorite post Black Holes album. I, I think it. It was, I don't know, Simulation Theory might beat it now. Just because just cause of Explorers and, like... Okay, Animals like, to... Uh, animals is fantastic, yeah. Animals to Big Freeze is, like, a really great Three Strong st- I know stri- one of my good friends that I go to school with, who is an enormous Muse fan, he hates Big Freeze. He's told me that it's the only Muse song he doesn't like, and I have no idea why. It's I weird. mean, it does sound like U2. But it's a really, really, really good I YouTube. The chorus, oh. and like the little the chorus is fantastic. That's like maybe Matt mm-hmm. Bellamy's most like amazing performance. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I feel like we should what? get back on topic yeah. here with simulation theory because just... we could just talk about Muse for hours. Yeah, I feel like we're a little excited about that. Um, but yeah, but simulation theory. I think I liked your point. Uh, even if I don't agree about good evolution and bad evolution. I feel like that, that has to be a distinction with a lot of bands being accused of selling out. Um, but here's, another, here's another point to that. Is selling out always bad? I, mean, I think selling out is a very derogatory term in and of itself. Selling out implies mm-hmm. that your sound change is yeah. meant to maximize profit. I, You're doing no, it for yeah, yeah. The song, I think, has gotten like, flanderized as a phrase, too. Yeah, yeah. I think like every time a band shifts their sound especially more to a more accessible and um in many cases uh electronic friendly degree uh mm. you get accusations of being no, sellouts not always the case as well because yeah. people get called sellouts when they sign to a major label such as green day when they yeah green day uh, they were called sellouts mm-hmm. from there or uh, they even got more recently from a club that yeah. they used to play in because they signed to a major label or, or more recently, like, Carsey Headrest, when they signed to Matador. Um, they get called sellouts. Well, I mean, like, by the weird, hardcore band camp purists. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, the type of people who will say one is better than Teens of Denial. The, pe- the, pe- <laughs> the people... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, pretty much the complete opposite of me, because I like my title with my, like, 1400 kilohertz of music. Style. Yeah, re- you're like a audiophile. You like I'm the... an audiophile. I just like stuff to sound good. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's fair, and that's a valid point, that's a valid yeah. position. Yeah, I mm-hmm. um, but then at the same time, I like I the original sure. mix of Rush's Vapor Trials, too. I understand there's a certain, like, there's a certain, like, guttural appeal yeah. to, like, raw um, stuff. I, there's a lot of raw stuff, but, like, Invisible Lantern by Screaming Trees. I love that yeah. album, it's so, like, stripped down. But, but, yeah, as far as selling out and tying into the state of rock, it seems like a lot of bands are making the shift to either popier or electronic mm-hmm. music. Um, take yeah, Paramore sure. last year. Uh, Paramore, yeah. Which um, I think is an example of good yeah. evolution. I'd say even great yeah. because I'm not into the pop punk Paramore. Um, I don't know. It just doesn't click with me. I'm not, maybe it's just that I'm not into that style, mm-hmm. but I legitimately love uh, After Laughter and the self-titled albums. <laughs> Those are really great yeah. pop rock albums. I mean, I think the only <laughs> album of theirs I've listened to is After Laughter. And I barely listen to any Paramore, I mean, I but really like of, those thing, of the songs I've heard, yeah, I agree. You can want to, my, my girlfriend was really into, because she loves pop punk, she was really into Paramore, and <laughs> she hates After Laughter. Uh, <laughs> That's another I don't, know, like, I don't know, but you see that a lot with a bunch of bands now. Like, you look yeah. at Queens of the Stone Age, Villains is so much more, like, um, layered, I guess would be the word. Villains or just, like, like vill- I mean, that, that's not, I'm not talking about good or bad. I'm just, like, it's very clear, like, direction and sound. The villains is much more poppy than anything. Yeah, that... yeah it's got a lot less grit to it. Um, mm-hmm. it's Like, it's a lot, a lot cleaner. Grit. It's cleaner it's compared so to their other stuff. It's, yeah, like, Mark Ronson kind of, like, just comes in and, um... And I have mixed feelings about, I would say the production of Villains is probably its weakest aspect. I, there are moments like Evil Has Landed, or, you know, um, even, like, Unreborn Again, where I wish that that was a little rougher sounding. It had a bit more oomph to it, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. The of the Evil Has 
landed is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but imagine if that were like even heavier. If that was like if that had like songs for the death production. There's certain yeah, I agree. There's certain points where the production kind of gets in the way. I feel album. like, and I feel like the drums are probably the weakest point, which is a shame because it's the first album with John Theodore it's as John the drummer. Theodore. Yeah, and I'm like, what are you? It's John Theodore. Yeah, of, and then of you, the guy you who played that? on the first two Mars Volta albums. Which, even though I'm not a huge Mars Volta guy, the drumming mm-hmm. on those albums is insane. <laughs> yeah, D- John Theodore is um, a virtuoso. But yeah, back to the subject at hand. You know. There's all these bands um, currently who are, I think since rock is becoming less of a mainstream thing, it's rock bands trying to find a way to find success. To um, keep the relevance. To get back to the mainstream. Yeah, yeah, stay relevant. To keep Not get back to the mainstream, but just appeal yeah. to wider and audience. I, and I think there are two main ways that bands with established careers have been going about that. One of which is like, you know, more, a more like a cleaner sound, as you said, Queens of Stone Age, Muse, they're doing that. But the other way is that you're seeing like a lot of acts taking a different direction and go like so experimental. Mm, yeah. yeah. Like um, you see Arctic Monkeys is a great example of that. I know not everybody loved that album, but you can't say that it sounds anything like their previous stuff. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think like, that's true. like it, but you're right. Yeah. It was a good experiment. Like, that is, mm-hmm. it was definitely a left hook. It was like yeah, left something that was like threw yeah. people for a loop. And they knew which, that it would throw people for a loop, which is why they didn't release it, any singles before it came. And it out. got, and it got that almost, attention. and it got attention for it. Yeah, that almost like I would almost say, that's not the best example though, because um, Arctic Monkeys, whatever they released, was going to be massive anyways. Um, because that's AM true, is arguably system. probably the most iconic rock album of that's, the decade that's actually not really that it has point. not that it has much competition like rock has yeah. is albums in the mainstream mm-hmm. um are not huge with rock th- um this decade oh, um is this about, uh, you usually just you usually just have like a th- yeah. two or three songs um a year that get on the hot 100 like in the lower half of it you know yeah. you have that weird indie hit like last year it was feel it still 2011, you had pumped up kicks, that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. The the voids though, that's another really good example of that. Bro. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> because is so good. It's just like they with every song there, it's like Julian takes in just a completely different direction. I think there's genuinely a song. No matter who you are, somebody's going to like some song on that album because it's just it, like every song takes on a different persona. Yeah, that album's like a box of crayons. No, I never yeah. listened to it. Never heard that one yet. Oh, you, sh- you uh, definitely, you you definitely should. Right. If you I like the it, strokes, yeah, because it's um, you definitely, definitely. Yeah, but, uh, it's not, yeah, it's one that I was supposed to get round to, but I've listened to more new albums this year than I have any other year, so I just haven't yeah. done it. Yeah, it's, I think it, I think it rivals this. Is, is this it? It's, I, it's my favorite thing that Julian's ever been a part of. That's controversial, yeah. but like, I just love that thing. Um, is that, this it? Is great though. I think that's what Julian's been going for. Mm-hmm. I think that's literally legitimately what Julian's been trying to do since first impressions. Yeah. Because he's made, uh, like, um, The Strokes extremely experimental the last few albums. albums for them, I've yeah. loved, but extremely experimental. Yeah. Not, like, not like re- revolutionary, but weird for a band that basically yeah. created the blueprint for all of the rock music to come in the 2000s. I mean, is one of my favorite Stroke songs. Come Down Machine is so overhated. Like, th- I-, I listened to that expecting it to suck because people really didn't yeah, like it. But, but I was like... It's really good. It's a good album. It's, it's pretty solid. Actually, I haven't listened to anything by the Strokes past Room on Fire. <laughs> oh, dude, get out of here. <laughs> Listen to Angles. I mean, Listen to those angles. two are the best. Angles is really good, though. I do yeah, like yeah. Angles a lot. Um... But yeah, um, there's a this has been a really good year. I I've loved 2018. I think oh, yeah. 2018. I've given out 20... so many nine out of tens this year. It's actually ridiculous. 2018, it just like I think this is gonna go down. It's like it's particularly with hip hop, but also with rock. It's just been a crazy year. Yeah, um, there's been some bad though too. Um, oh, I yeah. think 
we've been kind of positive about this issue so far, but there, um, as far as the state of rock goes, uh, there's been some problems too. Um, let's address Greta Van Fleet. Oh, <laughs> I didn't okay. listen to the album. I watched Fantano's review. <laughs> I didn't uh, well, I, knew what it was gonna be. I, I did. I checked out a couple songs out of curiosity, and like, yeah, it's bad. It's pretty bad. Yeah, okay, I listened to the full thing, and as I said when I like put up put up a little blurb about it on one post, um, on you know where I post reviews, um, it was just like, uh, it's not a bad album. Like you can listen to it, and you're like, yeah, that sounds all right. No, but it's no, just it's not. The, it's just like I would. This, if you told me that I was listening to a Led Zeppelin B-side, I would believe you. I would not, yeah, if I had never heard, really does roll it's not, well. yeah, I, if I had never heard any Led Zeppelin or heard the name Led Zeppelin, I probably would have liked that album, but like, it's not, it's just, it's too much. It's too it's, imitative, it, if that's even a yeah. word. Yeah, <laughs> it like, it crosses the line from inspiration and just goes full on imitation. It's full on mm -hmm. cover band album. <laughs> Without the covers, as uh, Fantano said, but um, it's, inspiration is literally unavoidable. You're yeah. going to rip some. I mean, well, not really rip someone off. You're going to sound like somebody else, no matter what. That, that's like, and I think that's what a lot of people who are like purists about like classic rock in the '70s uh, mm -hmm. get, you know, riled up over. Like yeah. my uncle is very um, purist about funny. music like that and he's mm -hmm. all, like whenever i try to introduce him he's like see this sounds like something else and i'm like well everything yeah. sounds like something yeah else. but you could anything totally go... can be traced back to you know something you could totally go back before classic rock and find yeah who i mean yeah them. led zeppelin's just led zeppelin literally rips off um <laughs> yeah. uh like you know classic blues stuff and other rock bands yeah um so you know I think the current state of rock is not as bad as some people say it is. It's becoming no. more of a niche, and the stuff in the mainstream is admittedly oftentimes uh, pretty it's bad. Just becoming, it's just becoming like the the. It's just I think they've ran out of. Well, it's not that. It's just like the way that mainstream sound is going. It's completely against what rock is. Yeah, rock to find has lost the, uh, that danger quality. Yeah, rock has lost that sort of. You, rock used to be the sound of the youth, and it's not mm. anymore. Rap is. Rap is um, exactly, and I love rap. Rap is a fantastic genre. Yeah, but um, like it just it's like, I think in a way there are certain like people who I don't know they're not exactly the front runners of the genre, but like if you pull someone off the street, they're gonna know who Imagine Dragons is, is before Ice Age, but like yeah. The, like Imagine Dragons has become like it's almost like they're like influenced by the mainstream, and they're not really they were never rock to begin. With. I mean, well, you could arguably make the point they're kind of they were kind of like Coldplay at the beginning of their career, but they're just yeah. kind of like they it's gotten to the point where it's not even like it's unrecognizable. You can't call it rock anymore. Yeah, it's um, they're in a weird position um, because. I mean, I remember when Night Visions came out. Like, I remember being a kid, always hearing that on the radio. Like, um, mm -hmm. uh, I remember Amsterdam, like, before they released Radioactive. Like, that was on the alternative radio station, my local one. That's the and one. Picked, That's the song I was talking about. That song is decent. And we, and we picked up, um, my mom liked it, so she picked up, you know, the album. And I remember Radioactive was the first song, and I really liked that as, like, my 11-year-old self. Yeah, sure. And then it became a hit, like, a massive hit. Yeah. Um, and almost to the point where it's come back around and it's become a meme now. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, like, I remember them blowing up and it's just so weird to see them be this massive, like, they're at basically the four of quote-unquote rock music. Mm -hmm. um, like, but you know, if someone who's not, like, super into music... You know, if I tell them that I like rock music, they're they're gonna be like, oh, like Imagine Dragons, and I'm gonna be like, <sighs> I'm be like, hold up, son, we got a lot yeah. to tell you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Another interesting oh, but... thing about the current state of rock is that if you dig past the mainstream stuff and explore, it's in probably its most interesting state as an umbrella genre. 
right well, now. Well, yeah. Rock is, sure. Rock is basically going through a midlife crisis. <laughs> That's right. what I was thinking. It's not dying. It's in its midlife crisis. It's just like... Some, some people are taking to it much more gracefully. Some people are yeah. like... Um, and then you've got other people just trying to keep up. I think when you try to keep up with what's popular as a rock yeah. artist... You're gonna fall on your face. Yeah, you're exactly. I agree with because that. Because what's popular is not really complementary to the rock sound. Yeah, to the exactly. Rock. And I think I don't know. It's like I think they're at this point now where there isn't much more you can do new with rock. At least with just like with staying right. in the genre. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I think there are going to be ways that people can find a way forward. I don't know what they are because I'm not a musician, but um, Mm -hmm. like there's still fantastic rock albums. Not everything, not every great rock album has to be super innovative. Like Twin Fantasy is one of my favorite albums, if not my favorite album. That album is nothing like innovative. It's just like a really emotional, well-written and well-performed indie rock album. It's like why yeah, for sure. Going on about is the um, new Smashing Pumpkins next week. The singles. Uh, are I don't know about that one. Oh wait, I the forgot that was coming out. Back to they're bringing back a '90s sound, and it's done mm-hmm. very, very well. And I haven't listened to those yet. Again, it's not um, like you said. It's not anything special. It's just normal yeah. rock, but it just sounds. All the six, all three singles they've released have been really good, like compared to their previous couple of albums. But, and it's but I think, I think there are ways that you can introduce new sounds to rock. Like, okay, it was inevitable that I was gonna bring up this album. Uh, you won't get you want by daughters. Yeah, we'll talk about that for a while. At some point too. Can we oh, talk about so that for a while? That album, I can't explain. Like, I'm not. I understand. He, they definitely do. While they do have like in, like definite influences on that album, that album made me feel something that I don't think I've ever felt before, yeah, <laughs> which is like, terror. With that, with an album, genuine fear. I was genuinely like when I was listening to the album, I was checking my windows because <laughs> I was like, <laughs> pushes what rock is because like if you it's mm-hmm. just you maniacal. Say that mm-hmm. necessarily that it's rock it's right off the bat. Yeah. If you just showed it to someone off the street. Yeah, I feel if I should, you know, if I showed it to like any of my my friends, they'd be like, "What the hell is wrong with you?" Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think. Are you okay? I've seen I've seen rock and just like I've seen rock take on so many like emotions and things. I've never seen pure nihilism before. <laughs> it kind of just like, sounds just... like swans on cocaine. <laughs> Sw- it does... so, yeah, doesn't... it sounds like if MC Ride produced. A swans album. It's like swans. It's got like it's got it's got some swans in there. Got some Sonic Youth. Got some, like like the really like rough stuff by Sonic Youth. Not like Teenage Riot or something like that, but like yeah. something earlier. Um, it kind of reminds me of um like the song Less Sex. That reminds that has a big Nine Inch Nails. Vibe. Nine Inch Nails, exactly. Yeah, um, and yeah, there's a lot of no wave stuff going on yeah. there like yeah. um because i definitely got drumming it out vibes it. Off of it. fantastic vibes. Mm-hmm. Vibes from it. just with those like simple but very very effective and atmospheric drum beats on the mm-hmm. first track yeah it's 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 got that sense of just like primal yeah just, just dread uh, emotion it's, it's not so, meant to it's so visceral yeah just, yeah like, exactly it, that's a word that's that, a word shit, word. Just, that shit just like cloaks you like you it, it it terrorized it like haunted me for like a solid week like i'd just be sitting in like i'd be sitting in class and just i just hear the riff from the reason they hate me just start like going <laughs> or just the flammable man's like last 30 the, seconds and you're like whoa or 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 guest house or all of guest house <laughs> guest house is so good. Uh, that's my favorite one like the outro which just let me in I don't think um, I can. I don't think I can even pick a favorite from. There's like all the songs are just. Yeah, if you haven't, if you're listening to this and you haven't listened to, you won't get what you want. But I'm not gonna straight up recommend it because if you've never like dipped your toe into noise rock, that is going oh, to be. Yeah. <laughs> if you, if you heard... but if you want just something to shake you to your very core, um, that's the album 
for you. Go listen to that. You got it. Yeah. Absolutely. There we go. That will be a thing. Every podcast we can recommend an album. That will be a thing. Yeah, that's our yeah. recommendation. If I you haven't noticed, we are making this up as we're going along. Yeah. <laughs> it is a, it is a 10 out of 10 for me. My daughters listen to it. Yeah, that gets a recommendation. That's that that is definitely one of the my one of the better albums of the year. One of my favorites. One hundred percent. I think it's my favorite. Well, it it's tied cool. with another album, but like I can't pick which one it is. But uh, well, speaking of that album, speaking of the other album that I, oh, speaking, the, yeah. speaking of the other album that I gave a ten out of ten. This is a little interesting. So it's not confirmed yet because the nominations have not come out for the Grammys yet. But uh, esteemed rapper genius Kanye West. Well, he didn't do it, his label did, but one of his songs off of Kids, um, Kids See Ghost, which is a uh, side note uh, masterpiece, uh, he, uh, it's pretty good. It's up for a Grammy, apparently, for a best rock song. And let's not, I don't want to get too into that because that could be its whole own topic. But I think an interesting point to make out of that is like the direction that mainstream rock is gone. You can, I'm not saying that that's a rock song, but you can totally like have and see an argument for ghost town part two being a rock song because you look at like imagine dragons i can't you can't tell me with a straight face that that song is any less rock than any imagine dragon song yeah um so like yeah i feel like the lines between genres are beginning to blur a bit because of all the mainstream yeah. pop that's rock. good in exactly. my opinion but then yeah i agree Blurred genres, you know everything and then if so I... is there any point in having genres anymore I agree that there's a, there's a, oh, well, probably not, maybe not, maybe we should just get rid of genres. <laughs> I think, I think genres are convenient, we lo- we as people love to categorize things, and it's easy to say that I listen to this type of music, it makes, it, it helps you understand, but I think musically, from a musical standpoint, without thinking of any of that, um, I think the mindset of genres could be harmful. Like, if you decide, I want to make rock music instead of th- deciding, I want to just make music, um, mm-hmm. the music that I am capable of making and want to make. Um, yeah, exactly. Oh, so. one, one other thing about genres, there's a certain, like, ju- there's a certain, like, subgenre of rock that I think, in particular, is thriving right now, and that's punk. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For like, sure. In the like, underground for rock. You see, like, yeah. Idols, Ice Age, Parquet Courts, um, there's, some, there's one other one I can't really remember right now, but that, out, that, that... Yeah, Punk and Post Punk are doing well. Punk and Post Punk are doing very well, and I think, I don't want to get political either, but, like, it's definitely because of that. Yeah, just the, just the, the, the uh, is. he who shall not be named. Uh, yeah, that. Oh. Yeah, a lot of a things. Lot of political shit going down, and... Mm-hmm. Underground punk in London is probably doing very Yeah, well. I- Idols. Idols are English. I- yeah, idols yeah. are like the most idols British yeah. band to ever British. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, I, that's real. Yeah, I'm not always punk, super in the mood for Joy as an Act of Resistance, but that has to be like one of my favorite written albums of the year. <laughs> like, there's yeah. so many great one liners. I agree. That's a good album. But. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah, I think punk is definitely in a renaissance right now. Yeah, which is great. Yeah, I love, I love that. Especially this year. This year is when it really came into, like, fruition. Yeah, yeah. Been, like, I'm trying to think cool. again. Kind of started. There was a lot of good last stuff year. coming out. Yeah, the first idols album, Brutalism. Um, oh, what else came something. out last year? There was some Algiers. Algiers. Um, Algiers. The Underside of Power. That was one of my favorite albums last year. It, like, mixes post-punk and, like, gospel soul and it's got like this huge political message um and it's just fantastic i don't know if either of you have listened to that one but that is a gem I, it's been on, it's been on my me, list but i haven't it's been on my list and yeah, the like, album you recommended it to me to me today i was like this kind of has that vibe um but mm-hmm. you know, we'll talk about that later because that's not really related but um yeah <laughs> it's not yeah the, yeah, really interesting. Yeah, I like I like the fact that punk has come back. But of all all genres, it's about time. Like, yeah, it's about time. I think it's yeah, because it's, it not, it's not been dead. Like, it's just it's it has not been punk just as sleeps for years like, at a time. Punk just sleeps for years at a time. It's just how it's been. It's not been as um, maybe what's the word? It hasn't sounded so purposeful in a while. Yeah, exactly. 
like it has just such a defined message and such mm-hmm. like legitimate anger um yeah recently uh even if it's not like like idols idols sound very angry but even parquet courts parquet courts don't sound super aggressive but they have something very mm-hmm. interesting and very they, well thought out well, to they, say well they, well they did they did close out a song with fuck tom brady so <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh total football that's a really great cut um but they like they have it's one of those albums that doesn't just like point out problems it also it actually kind of offers solutions and um mm-hmm. that's always kind of refreshing you know Political yeah. music is something that's very. Uh, we could make another entire episode about that, but it, yeah. politics it's definitely politics, politics are have always yeah. been sort of a subject for a long time. You know, ever since, I mean, before the wall, but that was that's like a big example, whether you like it or not. Um, especially with concept albums, um, yeah. you know, that's, you've got politics. Um, are the other reason politics, you can just like. Like you can point to that with a lot of things going on in music right now. That's part of the reason why hip hop is kind of taking over. Yeah, um, but yeah, with like rock, um, it's been in rock forever. It's very political. Like a lot of yeah. um, rock artists recently have definitely taken a strong stance. Um, and mm. uh, yeah, from Muse to <laughs> Five Finger Death Punch, you know, you've got. <laughs> putting out really political albums. I mean, I think the earliest... Better and for worse. The earliest political yeah. rock album I can think of off the top of my head is Animals by Pink Floyd. That's probably a better uh, a better album than The Wall. Um, yeah, because the whole thing was political, about the dogs and the pigs and stuff representing the government. And then nowadays you've got, like, yeah, you've got those punk albums, you've got... You've got your drones, and you've got your... <laughs> Prophets of uh, Rage. <laughs> oh my god. I don't know if I've ever talked about this, but that album is a journey. Oh, uh, I have yet to listen to it. I listened to Tom Morello's latest no, last I month. and I haven't heard that. Um, I don't know. I haven't listened to Prophets of Rage, but from what I've heard, it's as bad as that. Um... It, like, bad, tried- in that, bad in that point's hilarious. Uh, yeah. yeah. Listen to the song, listen to the song Take Me Higher. That song is, oh my god. And yeah, I, I think we touched on it earlier, but like, what are bands doing to try, rock bands trying to do to stay relevant, um, going back to that, um, Tom Morello's new album was, is a good example of it going terribly wrong. You know, they're trying, fuse with um with other genres they're trying to incorporate other elements and a lot of the time i think the mistake they make is that instead of taking the best elements of genres like edm like pop like rap and putting them into the context of a rock album they oftentimes make a generic edm or hip-hop sounding record and add in guitars well, well, evolution is evolution. Um, there are good ways to do it and bad ways to do it. I think particularly the the key to it is to keep some kind of something alive about your sound. Like death yeah, is it, a great example of that. Radiohead, like yeah, Radiohead's the probably the the defining like the definitive example of evolving right. Yeah, <laughs> like really right. Um, yeah. They so pretty much do anything, and it would just be a freaking masterpiece. It doesn't help that like they their fan base will literally go along with anything. Like oh, yeah. they could make a new metal album, and Pitchfork would give it a nine out of ten. <laughs> well, also another uh, example of fusing genres to try and stay relevant: new Weezer single. Oh, can't run. Um, no comment. Huh? Um, I have not heard any Weezer since okay. like, <laughs> like that song. I like it better than anything on Pacific Daydream. I I think it's tied for me. Like, I I it's just the lyrics. 
uh, <laughs> just no. It's got the simulation theory charm. Like it's the most like weird, hilarious thing that I kind of like it. I think it's funny. If that's our taste of the black album, if that's what it's gonna be, I'm not excited. <laughs> I don't know. Still producing it. <laughs> yeah, I think like. I think it'll be better than Pacific Daydream. That's a really low bar. For the yeah. Cuomo trying to be a badass again vibes. Yeah, can't stop partying. <laughs> um, it's not that bad. Though. Yeah, now he can't knock the hustle. Um, I don't know. I like the chorus in that, and well, I'm not all over it. The funk vibe. I think it's. Um, I think it's an alright song. I I didn't hate it. It's weird, and I don't know exactly how to feel about it, but I don't dislike it um they're just doing a lot of weird stuff these days i mean it's i think bad is better sometimes bad is better than boring um oh yeah sure i think it it's weird but um i can kind of respect that they're trying to do something different whereas with uh pacific daydream it seemed like they were just chasing after a mainstream sound this is not mainstream yeah. this is just weird <laughs> doesn't really know what it's doing, but it's there, so enjoy it. Yeah, take it or leave it. Well, so, right. something, else to, something else to bring up, like, people have commented about rock going more pop, but, like, there are acts out there that show that that might not be a bad thing, because you look at Tame Impala or MGMT. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. The fans I love, so... Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, Tame Impala has, yeah, progressively gotten less rock-oriented and just more, like, straight-up psychedelic pop, and all the better for it. Currents it is happen. amazing. And let It Happen is one of my... <laughs> let It Happen is one of my favorite songs yeah, of the decade, Impala. maybe just ever. Like, the build-up and the layers are just... It's, ugh, it's, Tame Impala is an example of a band who got popular and also got better. Yeah, yeah, um, that's true, and they've, to a lot of, you know, success, they've, um, mm-hmm. they're one of the bigger names in Alternative, even despite not releasing anything in three, almost four years, um, yeah. Where is that new album? Where is it? I mean, the less I know, the less I know, the better, should have made them massive, that song should have been, like, a alternative chart topper. And it was, while it was successful, I think that song deserved so much more attention. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Have we got any other topics that we're throwing in today? I think uh, we should just... Think find something I think to close should, it out on. I think we should just throw out our closing statements. Love. Alright, yeah, as far as the current state of rock, um, I think it's very exaggerated. You know, you have people saying that rock is dead, or... Um, that kind of thing but for the most part i don't think that's the case um you know reports of rock's death have been greatly exaggerated um and this is coming from someone who loves hip-hop and i I think it's in its golden age right now hip-hop is but i think if you really dig down unintended muse reference uh, oh my god and actually look Look, you will you can find some really really great stuff going on in the genre. Some really um, not groundbreaking, but just um, solid things going on. There's a lot going on. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. There, there's nothing linear about it. Like with yeah. anything with music, there's the like music as a whole. I always compare music to like a science. Science mm-hmm. and science builds on other science. Like in in the in the same way that music and music is just like constantly branching out and evolving, and it does what it does. And that I mean, rock is. I agree that rock is in like. I guess overall, I could say that it is in a slump, but like I think I mean I think it's on its way out. I think the yeah. worst is behind us. Let me just say that. I mean, I I would say the worst was probably. Uh, late nineties, early two thousands, new metal. Oh, that's true. That's true. I mean, I think it goes. I think it goes on waves. So like, yeah. so like, yeah, I think, I think it's a good time for music in general. And I think rock is slowly like building up steam back because like yeah. you won't, you won't get what you want is like the yeah. best rock album I've heard. And so, well, science fiction came out last year, but like before that, <laughs> yeah, there was, big, there was like a big, I think 20, like there were like two or three years where nothing like 
amazing came out. Nothing. No, I, think, I, I disagree. I think there's some amazing stuff going on, but like nothing like groundbreaking. Nothing that made nothing you go. The, I've never heard the, anything like this. Yeah. Nothing at the level of those two albums. I mean, Plowing Into the Field of Love came out a little bit before that, but like no, there's a lot of. There's always going to yeah. be good music, no matter what. Yeah, that's what, that's true. I think that's the bottom line. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so, I guess for my end statement would basically be agreeing with you guys about there's a lot going on nothing too groundbreaking but if you dig there's definitely a lot going on within the rock genre which is actually quite interesting when you do find it and like you were saying about this greater band fleet stuff and rock being dead and they're bringing it back which is just not true at all <laughs> um, Great Fan Fleet are not bringing it back. And no. it's different. Hip hop is definitely the main mainstream thing in America. But I can speak for England here and say that rock's still actually pretty big here. And a lot of rock albums top the charts quite frequently. Like, I bet Simulation Theory is going to go to number one. Well, it might lose to Origins. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> But anyways, continue. But yeah, rock isn't dead. Lots of interesting stuff going on. That was my thing in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I don't mean that in the rock's not dead. You know, screw hip hop and pop. No, no. Um, oh, no. obviously yeah, no. not. All music it's, uh, genres are great. It's except just... country. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, there's great stuff. But yeah, anyways, um, yeah, this is. The power trio. Power trio. So, power trio. Power trio. That perfect. may or may not stick. Um, <laughs> but it will stick. We'll be the best power trio. We'll, ch we'll change the name every week. <laughs> the impossible to follow podcast. <laughs> All right. All right. And I'll catch right. everyone in the next podcast.